Today is going to be fun because I'm ready to talk about one of my favorite neutral colors to use. In fact, this warm gray has slowly become my number one color to use in houses that are getting ready to be sold or staged. Benjamin Moore describes it as a go-to gray that's timeless with a modern edge. This earthy organic neutral is soft and stylish, creating a setting that feels distinctly personal. Does all that sound good? Well then have I got the color for you. I'm James from thepaintpeople.com and this is Color Code, cracking the code on color selection. This is a segment of videos where we discuss paint colors in detail, their undertones, and how to best use them in your home or your customers. If there are any colors that you want featured on Color Code, don't forget to let us know down below. Clicking the subscribe button and the like button is a great way to make my day. It doesn't cost you anything and it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. On this episode of Color Code, we're going to be discussing a light neutral that has proven itself as being a bit of a Swiss army knife of the color world. It can also be interpreted as the slightly lighter counterpart to one of Benjamin Moore's most popular colors ever. If you have a lot of color knowledge, the Color Code HC173 may seem a bit familiar to you. Edgecomb Gray sits within the gray beige or grayish category of colors meaning it walks the fine line between warm and cool. It's just gray enough to work with more modern monochromatic furniture, steel fixtures, and dark gray accents. It also has that beige touch as well, which introduces a dash of a gold slash taupe undertone to it, which means it keeps it feeling grounded and closer towards the middle of the neutral scale. Not quite a gray, definitely not a beige, although it may feel like one or the other at several points throughout the day. Edgecomb Gray can sometimes have a life of its own and adjust from morning to night based on the changes in lighting conditions. Based on my experience personally, as more light is introduced, the more Edgecomb will clean up and display its airy gray characteristics. With a bit less light, or at least less natural light, the undertones will feel a little bit heavier and the color can read a bit darker and slightly warmer, believe it or not. The good news is that the amped up warmth still makes it a pleasant enough color to look at when it gets darker and that can't be said about many other colors. Its LRV is 63.88, which means it's in the lighter category of colors, not a mid-tone and not an off-white. Where are some of the best places to use it? Being as light as it is, this is absolutely main color caliber. It sits right in a nice little sweet spot that makes Edgecomb Gray work in modern decors and more traditional ones. It's light enough to be used in darker areas as well, but has enough to it that it won't just look like white when there's a lot of light coming in the room. There are times when perhaps you want a more dramatic look and Edgecomb Gray doesn't really come with a lot of drama. It's a carefree color that excels at being quite usable throughout your entire home. It's even great in kitchens and bathrooms because it seems to go so nicely with blacks and whites too. If I had to find somewhere where I wouldn't necessarily recommend it would be on kitchen cabinets. I'd prefer to either go much lighter or darker because Edgecomb sort of sits right in the middle that may make it a bit non-specific on cabinets. What color should you pair it with? I would pick any white or off-white that is slightly warm or completely neutral and stark. Try and avoid the cooler whites when working with Edgecomb because you don't really want your woodwork to clash with the walls. Benjamin Moore Super White is as stark as I'd recommend you go for a sensibly clean look. And on the other hand, if you put White Dove on your trim, it would be as warm and dark as you'd wanna go for a more subtle aesthetic. Each one will provide varying levels of contrast between your woodwork and your walls, and it's all dependent on your desired look. What are some alternatives? Well, remember when I talked about Edgecomb Gray being close to one of Benjamin Moore's more popular colors? Well, it's literally right next to Revere Pewter on the color chart. Now, even though they're next door neighbors, they're not exactly light and dark counterparts. Firstly, there's only about a seven or eight LRV difference, 
meaning they're relatively similar in depth, but it's just enough of a difference to make Riviere Pewter more pronounced with its undertones. The light warmth is still there, but it's overpowered by its taupe tone, making Riviere Pewter a tad more gray than Edgecomb. There's also a cooler alternative to Edgecomb Gray and Revere Pewter, and it's called Stonington Gray. It's a bit darker than one, a bit lighter than the other, but definitely more towards the cooler side if that suits your personal style a bit more. You can check out a more detailed look at Stonington Gray right over here in another episode of Color Code. We do several videos every single week on this channel, some about paint colors like this one, and other videos that are more so about the technical side of painting. If you've made it this far, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for this one. See you on the next one.